In South Africa's wild bushveld, color is crucial. Blending in, standing out, all color has purpose. To communicate, hide, distract. An animal's color is key to its survival. Anything new or unusual is tested every moment. Most don't make it, but sometimes nature throws up something determined to survive. That's what's happening in this wilderness. Only once in a generation do white lions appear here. Now, two wild white cubs have been born. Can they survive? The Kruger Wilderness is the jewel of South Africa. A wildlife paradise. Here, nature's rhythms run strong. It's a place where prey can thrive, with predators never far behind. And here, in a corner called Timbavati, nature is conducting a wild experiment. Spotted hyenas are the first to see something unusual in the grass. She's only four months old, but already looks toughened up by this hard wilderness. The hyenas will try to kill her, but they don't see her better camouflaged mother. Even covered in dirt, this cub stands out. She looks nothing like other lion cubs. Her two older male cousins are a deep, tawny brown. The difference is clear next to her mother. She is a white cub born in a tawny pride. Both her mother and father carry the rare gene that produces white offspring. And sometimes, there can be more than one. Our cub has an identical sister. This is a small pride, just two adult lionesses, themselves sisters, and their four cubs. They are a close, affectionate family. Local rangers have named the first white cub Inkani, little fighter. Her sister is Shinga, little hunter. They have a fighting spirit and even take on their bigger cousins. The males are stronger, but these white cubs are feisty little lions. They were discovered three months ago after emerging from their den. They were as white as snow. They had a tawny brother, but he didn't survive his first crucial weeks. Their cousins are two months older, so these white cats will always be the underdogs. but their high visibility may become their greatest challenge. Only three cubs have survived to adulthood since white lions were first discovered here in 1975. 
the Tony Cub's mother may also carry the white gene. Rangers call her Kanya, the pale one. The white cub's mother is Matimba, the powerful one. From her and Kanya, the cubs will learn everything to survive and thrive here. They just need to follow in their footsteps. By October, Kruger's long dry winter gives way to spring rainstorms, which reveal the cubs' true colors. They are not albino, but have a condition called lookism, in which their bodies make very little pigment of any kind. In all other ways, they are just like any lion cub as they discover the world around them. The cub's birth comes at a critical time. Their father and defender of the pride has disappeared. Rival males may have killed him. Without a father to defend them, the cub's future is in peril. The two mothers have already detected intruders who are attacking a nearby herd of buffalo. One of their calves is down. Buffalo will defend their young ferociously, but this male lion doesn't fear them. He has a brother to back him up and another brother to back him up. These lions are nomads in search of a pride of lionesses to take over. The three brothers are in their prime. Not even a herd of buffalo can stop them, but they will try. Buffalo are huge, powerful animals, and they have the weapons to fight lions. A strong coalition like this is ready for its own pride and territory. Once again, the buffalo close in. The lion spots an opportunity and is attacked himself. After this meal, they will come for the cubs. The breeze is growing stronger. The cub's mother can smell the intruder's scent. Somewhere, they're out there. And recently, they've been here too. Kanya can detect the faintest scent. Some deep maternal instinct directs the two mothers. 
they must take their cubs away, far from the approaching danger. Far from the familiar mountains that overshadow their home. Deeper into unknown territory. Kruger Park is vast, the size of New Jersey. It's covered by a dense woodland, which supports great numbers of herbivores. All of these species are adapted to the bush in their own special ways, and all of them are prey for lions. Kruger is ruled by 2,000 lions, each pride with its own distinct territory. Matimba and Kanya can only keep their four cubs alive if they stay out of these territories. From now on, this family must live in the shadows. But wherever they go, they will still leave signs behind. One of the three nomads is on their trail. He can smell their scent. If the nomads catch up and take over this pride, they will kill the cubs. That will bring the mothers back into Estras, so they will bear the nomads' offspring soon after. Rival predators are another lethal threat. If the cubs are found unattended by a keen-eyed leopard, it will kill them. Hyenas will too. Predators don't want rivals around. In their first few days of exile, the white pride is still not far from home. They soon find another lion group on a fresh kill. They are close relations. Lions do not willingly share their meals, so the hungry white pride has a challenge. This will be the cub's first lesson in lion politics, and it will test them. They face three adult females and one sub-adult male. Within an hour, they creep into position. A naive tawny cub is the first to approach. <coughs> Matimba and Kanya know the first lesson in lion politics is patience. If Shinga can't eat now, she'll practice on her sister. Lesson number two, don't be too patient. With the other lions distracted, the two mothers edge closer. Matimba stands her ground and secures a feeding place. The white cub, Inkani, tries the other side. A harsh fact about lions is that the strongest eat first. Cubs are last to feed, and in times of scarcity, the first to die. Even a cub's mother will not share until she's eaten her field.
Now Shinga tries and finds a place beside her mother. She gives the other cubs courage. Despite being younger and weaker, the white cubs are on the meal before their cousins. And they will fight to keep their place. Their feistiness is a good sign, just what a lion cub needs to survive. The little hunter, Shinga, can't squeeze in, so she finds another way. But her move angers the male. It's a dangerous moment. But mother sorts him out. The cubs are learning how body posture, expressions and sounds influence other lions especially when they give the wrong signal. She still has plenty to learn. For Shinga, it's not enough just to fill her belly. She now wants to own this kill. She's learned the final lesson. A lion must fight for what it wants. From her lofty throne, she is, at least for now, queen of the beasts. Heavy rain clouds mark the onset of summer just in time for elephants who need plenty of water. Until this river flows again, they must dig to drink. river now comes back to life. Waterbuck thrive in wetlands, but even they are captivated by this spectacle. From all around, animals come to the river. It gives wild dogs a chance to cool off. But none enjoy it more than the elephants. Shinga and her sister are now eight months old. They are Tony cousins, ten months. This is unfamiliar territory for the two mothers. They don't know the best hunting spots. And the bush here is so dense it hides prey well. They will see the white cubs before the lions see them. After weeks with little to eat, the cubs are skin and bones. Mother lions do abandon weak cubs. But this mother waits. Without better hunting, the cubs won't make it. 
So the mothers lead their offspring in a new direction. Back home to Timbavati. The desperate cub, Inkani, needs nourishment, but mother's milk is drying up. When food runs this low, only the strongest will feed. And there's no room for three. The mothers know where they are going. Half a day's journey ahead is the favorite waterhole for a huge herd of buffalo, the strongest and meanest of lion prey. To feed, the lions will have to get past the aggressive bulls and a herd of horns. A wounded buffalo is an easier target. So long as the herd stays put, he is safe. But the large herd must move on to find food for all. The lame buffalo is left behind. The injured buffalo has survived the night, but he's not alone anymore. It's Kanya. Matimba is here too, and cubs. This is their first buffalo hunt. The older cub joins in the stalking. Matimba makes her move. The buffalo sees her. The buffalo is still too far from shore. Against even an injured buffalo, in water, Matimba loses the advantage. She's wary, but there's a bigger problem approaching. The stalkers are now stalked themselves. <laughs> Matimba moves to an attack position. The buffalo can't see her. Now she waits. Kanya settles in full view of the buffalo. The cubs are learning. One lioness distracts the prey, while the other waits to attack.
Hours later, the buffalo changes position. He doesn't see Matimba nearby. The cubs take it all in with the white cub right in the action. The mothers show the cubs exactly what to do. By morning, most of the pride can eat no more. Only Shinga still feeds. The formerly white cub is so messy and smelly, not even her mother accepts her greeting or her aunt or her cousin. Perhaps her sister will respond better. Not this time. There are some animals more patient than lions. Vultures, hyenas, when the pride moves to shade, to rest, then they make their move. Matimba tries to keep the scavengers away, but she will fail. There are too many, and she needs rest. Now it's the hyena's turn. This lion kill will feed many others. That's the way it is here. Every animal plays a vital role in the lives of others. This hyena is lactating. She has cubs. With this kill, the lions are feeding her cubs too. With the risk of starvation now behind them, the white pride can rest. But the cost of resting means they'll have to hunt again much sooner. Their hard-won meal will be devoured before sunset. The hunting here may be easier, but the mothers won't relax their vigilance. They keep their cubs moving. Every day, a new location. 
The white cubs are now 10 months old and they're becoming much more playful. Now everything's a target for fun. Their aunt Kanya is a playful teacher. Play will help the cubs grow strong and develop their hunting skills. Kanya never refuses an invitation to play. As for Matimba, she won't pause from guarding her family. Still, Kanya always tries to lighten Matimba's spirit. The cubs join in as Matimba approaches. Spotted hyenas are searching for food. They will target lions, especially groups without males. Follow them and push them off their meals. It's impossible not to spot the white cub on a zebra keel. But can they overpower Matimba and Kanya? The hyenas move in. The cubs are now old enough to learn how to confront hyenas. So Matimba takes them forward. The aggressive atmosphere charges Matimba. By scuffing the ground, she stakes claim to this place and the zebra kill behind them. The older tawny cub shows he's not frightened. He doesn't intimidate the hyenas. Now all four cubs take them on. Matimba allows the cubs to lead the confrontation. The cubs have done well, but it's still a standoff. Now Matimba shows them how to end the dispute. A day like this turns a cub 
into a lion. The three nomads are securing their claim to this territory, marking it well. Next, they will secure the females and remove any cubs in the way. The mothers will try to avoid them, but they will be alert to any opportunity. The pride is heading to a waterhole, but today they're in for a surprise. Another lion, a young male. The pride is cautious, but thirsty. There's plenty of room, but they'll need to walk past the male. He's not fully grown, but it could still injure the cubs. It's Inkani who tests him and decides to drink right beside him. This is a dangerous moment, but his submissive posture signals he doesn't want a fight, especially with Matimba. Still, he's nervous. He could attack. The young male is in poor shape, thin with an undeveloped mane, a sign of a tough life since leaving his pride. One day, these male cubs will have to leave this pride. This young male shows how hard it will be. Kruger's hot summer days are a time to rest. Animals need to get out of the baking sun. Leopards take shelter up in the trees and lions beneath them. Only a pair of leopard cubs don't feel the heat. They are full of life. The lion cubs aren't aware of the leopard in the tree. Only when she moves do they spot her. And that gives them an idea.
It's now May. The bush is turning color with the onset of autumn. The cubs are now 11 months old. They are strong and fit. Their mothers have raised them well. With their greater strength, they can now follow on hunts. They learn which animals are prey. They watch their mother's every move. Everything is fair game for these lions. Even the tallest of prey. They took the young giraffe and have dragged it under a bush, out of sight from vultures. For extra precaution, the mothers bury anything with a strong aroma. But there's a good breeze today. The scent may not remain in this secluded spot. And nomads are not far away. Something is approaching. A vivid monkey sounds the alarm. Whatever it was, seems to have gone. The mothers feel it's safe to return to their meal. By dusk, the cubs have had their fill. Now all they want is sleep. But tonight, there will be no sleep. The mothers risk their lives to save their cubs. It's one of the nomads. He's looking for the cubs. He charges again, but Matimba will not let him pass. Every second they stole him buys time for their cubs. If they keep this up, the mothers won't survive the night. And now his brother arrives and moves in on the giraffe kill. That stops the attack. The mothers have no chance against two males, but the nomad's attention has shifted. 
They'll settle for the giraffe kill. The cubs can wait. Now, the two mothers have only one goal. Find their cubs and flee. The powerful male could have killed them, but their brave defensive attack allowed their cubs to escape. Their soft calls tell their cubs it's safe to come out. The family is reunited. They will leave the nomads to their stolen meal. That will give them precious time to get away. The brothers have had a full night of feeding. These lions aren't going anywhere. By early morning, the pride is 10 miles away. It's been a long night and a long year. Most mothers would have lost their cubs by now. But these two remarkable lionesses have the knowledge and experience to keep them alive. The family will travel far to escape the nomads. Next time, they may not be so fortunate. Their journey must continue through this vast wilderness. Wherever they go, they will meet new dangers and challenges. Surviving it all will turn the cubs into the lions they are meant to be. By June, the pride has put the attack behind them. This date is a milestone. The two white sisters have made it through their first critical year. So far, their white coats have not stopped them and with every new day, their chances of surviving grow stronger. And so do their skills. Their tawny cousins are thriving too. But their mothers can't rest yet. There is still another long year before their cubs can fend for themselves. They still have much more to learn about their wild home, its rhythm of life, and its prey. Their story has just begun.